I've never had grasshopper. I've never had insects. In touch with their ancient traditions, known for their. <laughs> Then you see the sun rising. TV is something else. TV is so political. Mambo. Naito Mwengi. Hello guys. I'm Mwengi. Today I'm going to do a reaction video to Geography Now Kenya. I know Geography Now Kenya is an old video. But since I was doing Geography Now Somalia, Geography Now Ethiopia, and, I, and, since, and since I've reacted to Ethiopian history, no, Somali history, then I will react to Ethiopian history. I figured I might, I might as well do a Kenyan one because Kenya is my country of origin. If people did not know, one person suspected that I might be of Kenya and Ethiopia, but no, I'm Kenyan, I'm Kenyan. I'm 100% Kenyan. I just know a lot of history. I, I spend a lot of time with books, uh, you know, uh, and doing stuff like that. But then I'm a chemical engineering major, if you guys want to know. Okay, so, uh, but first of all, like, 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 subscribe to the channel. And if you're Kenyan and you've got a song that is good, that is popular, that you want me to react to, I will obviously react to it. I want to react to more Kenyan songs. If you guys suggest songs, I will react to them. Okay, now, what do we know about Kenyan geography? Kenya is about 582,000 square kilometers. Don't listen to other people. Other people are going to say it's 581, blah, blah, blah. They're going to try to take our territory, our country. Why? That's all Kenya. 582,000 square kilometers. In schools, that's how they teach it. On Wikipedia, they change the number. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with these people. Uh, they go change numbers and they make it look all confusing. But it's 582,000 square kilometers. Kenya is divided into 47 counties, the largest one being Turkana, the smallest one being Mombasa. Mombasa is actually the smallest county in Kenya at only 200 kilometers square. Uh, Turkana is about 78,000 square kilometers. I do not know that well, but yeah. What else? This is political geography. Kenya used to be divided into provinces, but then we were like, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. We're going to do something else here, man. That ain't cool. How can, how can the president appoint everybody's whatever? Anyways, now we have, uh, we have counties. Uh, uh, counties are led by governors who are elected by the people. Uh, I'm sounding all like, you know, anyway. Okay, tallest point in Kenya is Mount Kenya. Second tallest point, I think it's Mount Elgin. I don't really focus so much on the second tallest point. But the tallest point in Kenya is the second tallest point in Africa. The tallest point in Africa being Mount Kilimanjaro. Right next, right close to the Kenyan-Tanzanian border. Actually, this video is being shot right on the day we discovered that Magufuli passed away. So condolences on a serious note. Anyways, moving on. And plus, Tanzania was actually... A good destination. I really enjoyed traveling within Tanzania. It was good. Anyways, now moving forward. Does Kenya have major rivers? It has the Athi, Sabaki, Galana, whatever rivers. It has the Tana River. But these rivers aren't as big as the Nile in Uganda or the Nile in Ethiopia or the Nile passing the Nile that passes through the White Nile or the Blue Nile. It's not as big as any of those. Kenya actually isn't Kenya is green to the southern side. It's mountainous right to the south central part of the country. But then as you go east, it becomes really, really flat. As you go north, it also becomes really, really flat and dry. Okay, so Kenya terrain in the north is dry because... Uh, I'll explain. How do I explain it? It's on the... There's the windward side, the one that receives the nice, moist air. And then it rains on that side. And Kenya is on the leeward side, northern Kenya. That's why it's so dry. The Ethiopian highlands, they block uh, water from getting to Kenya. I'll, I'll show you the diagram of how this thing all works. Uh, Kenya's, Kenya has Africa's largest salt de desert lake, Lake Turkana. 
Kenya has Kenya has Kenya has a lot of biodiversity. There's a lion, there's cheetahs, there's everything in Kenya. Maybe except tigers. Tigers are Asian. And then African elephants also look different. They're bigger. Uh, they're less domestic. We don't domesticate elephants here. Bruh, they would like kill you. <laughs> elephants are now <laughs> known to stomp on people. No, for real though. Okay. And lions, like sometimes, Nairobi is also known for having the national park. It's a major national park within the city. There are lions there. One time, a lion escaped. I might put the video if I find it. So Kenya, like, Kenya, it's insane. Kenya has literally everything. If you want desert, it's there. If you want beaches, white sand beaches, it's there. If you want forests, there. If you want mountains, it's there. If you want a lake, it's there. Uh, okay, the river thing, the river thing is the only thing not going for us. We don't have, like, a nice big river, but we do have permanent rivers. Even we also have Nairobi River, although right now it's not in the best condition because of pollution and stuff like that. Yo, yo, yo. The capital of Kenya is Nairobi. I am from Nairobi. And Nairobi is one of the most dynamic, exciting cities in East Africa. I'll, I'll actually go as far to say Nairobi is the best city in East Africa. The best. No, no joke, no questions. It's the best city in East Africa. Okay, no, for real though. Nairobi is considered the financial hub of East and Central Africa. I think they, they write that on Wikipedia and all that, but lots of African companies that aren't headquartered in either South Africa, in South Africa or North Africa, they're headquartered right here in Nairobi. Nairobi is usually the headquarters either for Africa or for East and Central Africa for more, most international companies. And then Kenyan companies are also big. They go across the whole space. There's NTV, which is a huge Kenyan company. It's a media company that's all the way in Uganda, Rwanda. There is Equity, KCB Bank. Those are banks that are all over East and Central Africa. They're in up until the DRC. Okay, what are the main language? The main language spoken in Kenya is Swahili. I will say this. People will say stuff like, oh, but we speak in... No, no. Kenya's main language... Actually, Kenya's national language is Swahili. The official languages are like English and Swahili. But the national language is Swahili. And Kenyans don't really talk to each other in English. Unless it's like a super official, like, place or meeting or way. Okay, but we do have ethnicities and I'm not gonna dive into that because it doesn't matter. Okay, but then yeah, we do have the parent groups, the Bantus, nilo saharans and then the Kushites. But then in Kenya, we call them Nilots. We don't call them nilo saharan Think the Dinka Noir and Sudan type people, those are nice nilo saharans And mostly that's in Kenya, that's maybe the Luo. In Uganda, the Acholi, those two groups. In Kenya, it's mostly Bantu. I'd say maybe mo the majority of the population is Bantu, although they're centered in a, in not it's small one small pocket in the west and then southern Kenya and then the coast Swahili Swahili people they're Bantu people. The main language in Kenya is Swahili. We don't it's we don't call it a federal working language like in Ethiopia. Everybody is required to learn Swahili because it's a super neutral language. It, it's our neutral language, and it's the lingua franca within East and Central Africa. Now, beyond that, I'm just going to react and be shocked by whatever they say. Guys, remember, 582,000 square kilometers. If they say it's not that, we're going to have disagreements here. I'm going to start playing this video in 3, 2, 1. Hey, Ken. Yeah? Yeah, take this episode. You're going to be doing this the entire episode, aren't you? Yeah, you want to get paid, right? Uh. Yeah. Yeah, then act surprised every time that comes up in a script. Oh, that's so funny. Wow. I totally see what you did there. <laughs> mm, good boy. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host, Barbs. We are back in Africa, and I'm sure you've heard of at least a little bit about Kenya, whether it's where your Starbucks brew was imported from, or if you've seen those jumping Maasai people, or if you want to make another cliche Obama joke. Kenya seems to take the spotlight most in East Africa. It's made a name for itself. Now let's see where it is. The name Kenya is roughly derived from the words of various dialects, mm -hmm. meaning God's resting place. And when you see what's going on, you'll understand why. First of all, it could, me, it could be God's resting place, or... 
shiny top there are different ways you think about it kenya could also mean the places where the place where ostriches are because uh anyway doesn't matter located in east africa mm -hmm. transected in the south by the equator surrounded by five countries with a decent sized coast along the largest lake in africa lake victoria as well as the indian ocean to the east the country is divided into 47 semi-autonomous counties the capital and largest city nairobi which has its own county in itself the largest cities after nairobi would be mombasa and nakuru however the busiest airports would be the three international hubs nairobi jomo kenyatta mombasa's moy international and eldera international as mentioned in the ethiopia episode they have a dispute over the elemi triangle with ethiopia I think he forgot to also mention Kisumu is a major city. Kisumu is really a major city in the west side of the country. And I, I think Nakuru and Kisumu vie, vie for this third and fourth position like that. Anyway, yeah, a lame triangle. And as well as the incredibly packed Migingo Island in Lake Victoria, where over 130 people live on only 2,000 square meters of space. I mean, you're probably wondering, why do they all stay there? Couldn't they just spread out to the bigger adjacent Usingo Island with much more space? Shut up! That's why! Transport in Kenya is pretty developed compared to the other African states. Railway service runs between the coastal Mombasa all the way to the border of Uganda. Roads connect to virtually all their neighbors, a ton going into Tanzania, Uganda, and Somalia. It's Uganda, bro. It's Uganda. It's Uganda. It's not Uganda. Uganda. Oh, anyway. There's the two main ones that enter South Sudan and Ethiopia are the A1 and A2. Nairobi is cool because it's the only city in the world with a national park and game reserve. Some parts only seven kilometers from downtown, giving this unorthodox view of wild animals juxtaposed to cityscapes in the background. Anyway, some areas of interest throughout Kenya might include places like the National Peace, Love, Unity, and Silver Jubilee Monuments, the Jomo Kenyatta Statue, the Giraffe Center, and Giraffe Manor Hotel. Where yeah, I've been here. I will post my things to do in Nairobi video with this place and literally have giraffes come up to you bomas of kenya the ruins of gedi narni takwa milinga dani pate and shaka diani not dani diani okay i, I better i better stop correcting this guy on pronunciation Anyway. Uhuru Gardens Memorial Park, Iraq's prehistoric site and museum, Nairobi Gallery, African Heritage House, the Carnivore Restaurant, the Nairobi Railway Museum, George Adamson's Grave, Kitengela, Iten, home of the champions, and the Maasai <laughs> Ostrich Farm, where you can ride ostriches who are not too heavy. However, that list of man made structures pales in comparison to the natural wonders Kenya is known for. Which means we gotta transition into the next part. Hey, Ken! What's up? Yeah, guess what comes up next? Dude, it's the same thing in every episode. I'm pretty sure they know what's gonna happen. Oh, next. Okay, Ken, I'm really getting sick of your sass. Okay, I cannot stand it. <laughs> okay, that was good. What was good? <laughs> Some countries thrive off of industry, some off of finance. Kenya's strongest feature, though, would downright have to be its natural landscape. First of all, Kenya lies right on the East African Rift, which, as we explained in the Eritrea and Ethiopia episodes, is the series of cracks in East Africa that splits all the way down from the Red Sea to Mozambique, creating highlands in the west and flatter savannas and valleys in the east along the coast. This also creates a wonderful network of narrow, slivery lakes like the largest one, Lake Turkana, in the northwest, along the border with Ethiopia. Lake Turkana is the world's largest desert lake yeah. due to its salinity the world's largest alkaline lake oh yeah largest saline desert lake i said saline not alkaline. anyway this means that kenya is technically on a volcanic zone although most of the volcanoes are all but holocene and extinct the last major eruption was around 100 years ago on amurango golak in the central west highlands however at over 5100 meters that volcanic activity did create the largest mountain in kenya and the second in all of africa mount kenya which is where kenya got its name from oh and mount mogonot looks kind of creepy because it has like three mini crater pimples on the side close by the base of mount kenya you can find the longest river the tana that flows down to the valleys and eventually mm -hmm. empties into the indian ocean kenya has 54 national parks and game reserves the largest one being the Sabo in the southeast however the most popular one being the Maasai Mara yeah I would recommend if you if you're not Kenyan and you're looking to travel go to Maasai Mara or Amboseli uh, I've not really met anyone who goes to Sabo also Nairobi National Park is okay if you don't have time but Maasai Mara Amboseli are better I've been to Amboseli personally I've been to Nairobi National Park Maasai Mara is on next on the list Tanzania, technically part of the Serengeti. Here, the Great Migration occurs, in which every July, the largest animal migration on Earth moves millions of nomadic species up to Kenya from Tanzania. It's such a hot spot that even National Geographic is like so over it. They've covered it like a trillion times. Speaking of which, Kenya is, no surprise, a wildlife haven. The big five animals are common around here, one of which being the national animal, the African lion. And they can mm -hmm. be found at almost every... Lion in Swahili, Simba. I keep saying this. On the movie... 
Lion King. They were literally calling the lion, the Simba, lion. Uh, you know? Uh, anyway. There are way too many species to list, but basically almost every animal in the Lion King can be found in Kenya, let alone East Africa. And yes, wildebeest can be kind of like total douchebags. Who are wildebeest They're the ones that killed Mufasa. Not Mufasa. No, uh, oh, no. The, yeah. No, no. The dad. Oh, yeah, no, that is. Scar's the bad guy. Uh, yeah, no. Mufasa's the dad. Resource-wise, Kenya is a country of balance. Today, the service sector and tourism contributes to over 60% of their overall GDP, making it their largest foreign exchange earning sector. I think this was shot such a long time ago. I think things have changed now because like tourism in Kenya is really really it really isn't doing well I, and I think the strategy for a country of 50 million people should also change we shouldn't be so dependent on tourism but anyway I mean, keep it's always been a principal driving force for Kenya as well. Today, they are the third largest tea producer in the world after China and India. Yeah, way to go, Kenya. Speaking of which, food in Kenya is similar to other African Great Lake nations. Most meals are served with the national staple ugali, which is mashed grain powder, often mixed with cassava or plantains. Cooked in Actually, we don't mix it with cassava or plantains. We rarely do that. Very rare. Very, very rare. I think if they do it, maybe in Western Kenya, but no. Ugali is just starchy yeah. bland paste. You're supposed to eat it with stews and sauces yeah. and meats. Otherwise, sukuma wiki or greens usually accompany ugali at every meal. Yeah. Bueno and dalia are common. And if you're lucky, try some onyoso, nyen, and dede for snacks. Actually, this I think this is like showing the most extreme side of. I've never had grasshopper. I've never had insects. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Anyway, have Ton of sub Saharan African tribes have like amazing teeth. Well, it's mostly because a lot of them use chewing sticks, which are twigs from various trees, like this licorice is bush, gum trees, and the Salvador persica, also known as the toothbrush tree. These twigs have natural teeth cleaning and whitening properties. You can even buy them on Amazon. Overall, Kenya is seen as like the financial hub for both East and Central Africa. I told you. I told you. Kenya is the bomb. Kenya is where everything's at. Have the highest GDP in the region, famous ah, for the newly established digital industry, including the introduction of M Pesa, mobile banking systems used by millions of people across the world. Kenyans are also famous for the interesting investment groups like oh, yeah. Chama or Table Banking. It's a little hard to explain, but it's basically Yeah, it's like uh, okay, let him explain. Then if he says something wrong, I'll I'll explain. A crude version of bank loans, but it's operated by a community of friends that you really trust. It's like, all right, boys, put your money on the table. All right, cool. So this is all the money we got. You can grab as much as you want, but you got to explain what you're going to use it for and how you're going to invest and how you're going to pay off on interest next month. Ken, go. I'm going to take $5,000. There's these new shoes that I'm trying to invent, but get this. It's made out of coffee. Okay, Ken, you're out of the club. No, but seriously, check out this video by Joy Wool Organization. I'll put a link yeah. in the description. They did a great job explaining. Kenyan people are definitely an entrepreneurial bunch of people that have made a name for themselves. Let's see how in If East Africa was a family Kenya would be like the brother who got rich But still has some weird issues in his head That he kind of has to suppress First of all The country has about 49 million people And about three quarters of the population Is below 30 years of age The country is made up of about 47 different tribes However the majority of these tribes Are classified under the Bantu peoples yeah. at 67% The Nilotic peoples at around Think of Bantu people as the people who settled All the way up until South Africa uh yeah how do i explain it yeah percent and the remainder is made up of other groups mostly Cushitic, arabs indians and europeans of the bantu peoples however the largest tribes would be the kikuyu the luya and the kamba whereas the largest nilotic groups would be the kalajin and the luo the country mm -hmm. also uses the kenyan shilling as their currency they use the type g british style plug out and they drive on the left side of the road basically there is no single kenyan culture but rather a plethora of vibrant tribes each with their own unique traits trades and traditions for example uh, and, some of the overarching and i would say that's the perspective if you've also only lived in kenya once you move outside kenya i swear the cultures don't seem so different i don't know what happens is it's like something clicks when we are here we I, th I feel like kenyans when they're at home they all think of each other as very different but once you go outside and then you come back and then look at the same culture i don't feel like it that, that it looks the same but anyway I've gotten from you guys, the Kenyan geographies include descriptions like The Kikuyu are often known for being good businessmen The Luya are good at rugby The Luos take politics and music very seriously And they're very proud that Obama's dad was from their tribe The Kisi are the tough tea farmers The Kalajin are the runners as 75% of Okay, this is so true Now, the Kalajin, all those long distance runners 
Kenya has most of them Kanenjin and I think it's because of the altitude they have to live in I think they're used to the oxygen deprivation so it's much easier for them to run long distances but most of them are from this one small single region not the whole country anyway Olympic gold medal athletes have come from them, mostly in running sports. The Kamba are great pottery and carving artists. The Turkana have those really long beaded necklaces that stretch their necks. The Meru moves from Tanzania and might be a lost tribe of Israel. The Rendile are desert nomads. The Idako have a cool dance and are known for bullfighting. The Mijikenda live in a sacred forest where they bury these secret talisman things that I didn't have time to research. Hey, Ken! No, nope, not doing it this time. No, I'm not, I'm not making a pun. I'm, I literally just want to ask you something. Oh, okay. Can you research the Mijikenda tribe for me? Laughing, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> but the most famous and well-documented tribe would probably be the Maasai, semi-nomadic. So yeah, Maasai people are Nilotic, Nilocerans, and when we talk about Kenyan st national dressing or national culture, we actually culturally appropriate how they dress, but then they don't make up such a huge part of the population. You can find Maasai in Kenya and Tanzania found in both Tanzania and Kenya, largely in touch with their ancient traditions, known for their svelte tall bodies, unique customs, high jumping dances, wearing this thing known as a shuka cloth, which comes in various it's patterns, not, usually it's, with... It's not a shuka cloth, it's just a shuka. Shuka, it's just a... Uh, how do I explain it? It's just a shuka, it's not a shuka cloth. Uh. Uh, never mind. Blue on it. I bought this when I was in Tanzania. I never actually thought I would use it for anything, but <laughs> ten years later. Although dozens of languages exist in Kenya, there are two official languages: English and Kiswahili. Kiswahili is estimated to be spoken by about a hundred million people all across East Africa, and it is the only African language in the African Union. Many words are actually influenced from Arabic, as Arabic merchants and slave traders came in at the turn of the first millennium. In fact, the word Swahili comes from the Arabic word Swahil, which means coasts. Kenyan Kiswahili is known for being quite brash and blunt whereas the tanzanians are polite and private. actually this is so true so when i was in tanzania i think i think i noticed this about tanzania tanzanian swahili okay for example when i go to buy something i will a kenyan will say nipatie mkate give me bread a tanzanian will say i can i borrow bread they're like Ugh. i don't even know how to that's how it's like that's the major difference. A Tanzanian might say, Tafadali. Now I'm about Uni Uzi Mazi. Oh, whereas yeah. a Kenyan might say, Natakama. And I was talking about this with uh with with actually a person from Tanzania over the phone once I got back here. That's the major difference between us. But then other than that, the language is the same. Fun side note, the words Hakuna Matata are actually Swahili. However, the opening lyrics of the Lion King Circle of Life song are actually Zulu from yeah. South Africa. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Nazigonya Babaki. Nazibanya Babaki Tibaba. Nguenyama. 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 Then you see the sun rising. Anyway. Yeah, that's all Zulu. Now, history will take way too long to explain, but in the quickest way I can put it, early fossils of Neolithic hunter-gatherers, probably Khoisan people, Bushidic and Nilotic pastoralists probably move in from South Sudan and the Horn of Africa. Bantus come in and start farming and introduce iron. City-states pop up along the coast like Mombasa. Arabs and Persians come in and start trading for goods and slaves. Kilwa Sultanate, the Portuguese guy comes in and observes things. Omar Technically, that wasn't the Kilwa Sultanate. Mm. I, I've got so much to say about this. Arabs come in, the slave trade is in full force. Portuguese come in in the 17th century, start trading with Omanis. This Chinese guy stops in and observes things. Mm -hmm. Kiswahili becomes the lingua franca. Vasco da Gama takes a peak. Short-lived Wanga kingdom. The Germans make a short-lived protectorate until the British finally come in and colonize. Tea starts growing. Railroads get built. Tons of Indians come flocking as indentured servants. World War I, the Brits and Germans agree to avoid conflict in colonies. This guy doesn't listen, attacks. The Brits get mad and attack from behind in Zambia because clearly he forgot that it was also colonized by the Brits. Princess Elizabeth is in a hotel in a national park when she gets a call saying that her father died and now she is Queen Elizabeth Mau Mau Uprising, Independent I am Mau Mau Uprising, that's important 1963, Jomo Kenyatta is a hero more years, loaded with controversy Hey, what do I say? I wanna be I wanna be gentle, but I think during Moi's years that's when Kenya performed its absolute worst and Moi was a president for 24 years anyway
2002, he's not allowed to run again for president. A few massacres and a drought, and eventually they get back up and move on. And that's where we are today. Unfortunately, one of the biggest issues Kenya is faced with today would have to be tribalism. Today's scuffles and arguments still do occasionally occur between certain groups. However, it's not so bad, but let's be honest, it's still kind of noticeable. Most it's, of the honestly, it's not so bad. Actually, don't. it's only a problem during elections. Because uh, even right now, Right now, um, when I when I was doing these videos or when I do these videos, the people who give me uh, an, an an opinion about it, some people are actually people from the north, Oromo people. Some people are from the south central as well. Some people from actually some people from Uganda as well, but that doesn't matter so much. Yeah, it only matters during elections, not. Constant is underground and they still work heavily off of a bribe culture. The average Kenyan pays about 16 bribes per month just to get by in small situations in daily life. They even have a word for it, Kitu Kitoko. Okay, no, there was a song made about this. Kitu Kitoko. A small thing. Um, there's an artist who made a song about Kitu Kitoko. Uh, where a police officer is just asking him for a, for a small bribe. Kitu kidogo. Kitu thing kidogo small. Yeah. Small thing. Nonetheless, if there was a phrase that kind of summarized Kenya, it would probably be tedium, which translates to something like one last blow for triumph. No, I mean, this isn't the... Not really. I would say more like... I think, I feel like Hakuna Matata is more... <laughs> TVM is something else. TVM is so political. Raila Tibim, Tibim, Aguambo Tibim. The thing for Kenya is they become like a poster child for East Africa. Some oh. famous people of Kenyan descent or from Kenya might include Field Marshal Zedan Kimati. Yeah, well, Kimati Washuri Makatilili was a famous heroine. She really resisted the British. When they're trying to colonize, and then they colonize. Amenza, mother of the resistance, Uhuru Kenyatta, Charity Nilu, John Kiriamiti, Ezekiel Kemboy, Kipchoge Keino, Lupita Nyongo, Paul Targat, Dennis Oliek, Victor Wanyama, Oliek. David Machek. Not Oliek. Madhenge is an old artist. He used to sing pop songs uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, he was popular. He was really popular. And his wife. AKA cool. Nameless, Stella Mwangi, Fadili William, Obama's dad, Wangari Matai, Eric Wainaina, and probably the most famous one, Jomo Kenyatta, the father of Kenya. Yeah, he's on all the currency. This is the guy who... He didn't leave the mama. Did he leave the mama? He's the father of the nation. That's basically what matters. He really did lead the independence movement, especially after the state of emergency. He lived in London for a bit before Kenya became independent. He must have seen some things he didn't really like there or something like that. But then, bottom line, he became the first president of our country. That was a lot of info. Now let's finish off this with some tibim and get to the last final segment. The Kenya is kind of like the big shot. In three, two, one hopes of getting a better life. First of all, Kenya was kind of like the shining jewel of the British East African colonies. They knew something was special about Kenya, so they introduced tea, they deliberately connected Mombasa with the West via railroad. And I, honestly, I feel like the way some Kenyans also portray British colonialism in Kenya is too... It's too kind. Colonialism wasn't that nice. It wasn't about introducing tea. It was endangered servitude. Of even Indian people, there were the, not concentration camps, there were the camps people used to be kept at if you rebelled against them. Um, there's the whole thing about taking land from people who had greener land, just coming and taking it, taking it away because, just because. Forcing some ethnicities to kill our, all their cattle, and at that time, people only depended on land and whatever. So people didn't have money. During independence, they remain part of the Commonwealth, and Brits make up the largest group of visitors and national citizens amongst the white Kenyan population. India has a lot of ties to Kenya, as waves of immigrants were brought in by the British in the 19th century to build the Mombasa Rail. 
Some racial True. tensions existed, however, after both countries gained independence, they started to cooperate much better. Prime Minister Nehru gave support to Jomo Kenyatta. They have a technical and economic cooperation. I feel like also India and Kenya's relationship. They offer over 100 scholarships specifically to Kenyans, and today India makes up the sixth largest trading partner. I feel like, okay, as I was saying, I feel like India and Kenya's relationship, it's overstated. It is okay, but it's not the best international relationship. Kenya's like grown much closer to even China right now. And even Kenyans, I feel like they are very affiliated to Britain more. Even though I, I would prefer more South-South co cooperation between Indian, between countries like India, Brazil, and countries like that, um, realistically, that's not the case. That is not what is actually going on. Kenya should be cooperating with countries in the global south. We're talking, um, think right in that, between the topic of cancer, ca Capricorn. So that's basically Africa and countries within that line. But Kenya mostly internationally deals with mostly the UK, America, China, like that. India, to be honest, not so much. Yeah, trade exists, but... His friends, however, would probably be Ethiopia, Tanzania, and Uganda. Yes, now, this is very accurate. Kenya's closest allies are actually these countries. Even though, even on the Ethiopia vid, I don't think they mentioned... Did they mention it? I don't know. Ethiopia, the Kenyan Mau Mau rebel group operated... They used to hide in... Yes, they used to hide in Ethiopia. Let me stop speaking. Ethiopia during the uprising years. They have a mutual defense agreement, especially against the greater Somalia ideologists living in South Ethiopia. And Kenyans trust them like a wise uncle. Tanzania and Uganda have healthy rivalries with Kenya, but ultimately the three are like the great... To be honest, we do have a rivalry, especially with Tanzania. But I feel like... After visiting Tanzania, my perspective of this whole thing has changed. My question is, why are Tanzania and Kenya even called in different countries? It's, anyway, same language, same people, same customs. Is this the only thing that went wrong? Was that one chose, uh, what's it called, Ubepuri, capitalism, the other chose Ujama, socialism. And this is mostly a Western war we shouldn't have been involved with to begin with, to be honest. And then stuff with Uganda is always good. Victoria. All three speak Kiswahili, mm. they understand and piggyback off of each other's cultures, they marry each other's citizens frequently, they love each other. In conclusion, even though they may not be the most populous or largest in area, East Africa kind of revolves around Kenya. Economic and political controversies aside, they just have that certain drive that makes them stick out. When it comes to pulling through, they sure... Ken, yeah, uh, do it. Stay tuned. Kitterbus is coming up next. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that video right there. Um, I enjoyed the Geography Now Kenya video. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, internationally, Kenya is realistically the government and international relations are not like the best with India. They're not bad, but. Right now, it's probably China, the United Kingdom, the U.S. Kenyan, and Kenyan, the way the Kenyan, Kenyans, some Kenyans talk about the U.K., it's like, it's this close sweater partner. That's what, that was during, before the 2000s. These days, people, will, the government is more, more focused on, I would say, the U.S. and China, the bigger powers. Even though it's like a small, whatever, trying to, whatever. Anyways. This is good, this is good, this is good. Um, he, it's very true what he said about Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania. That, those are our closest countries. The other close country is Ethiopia. Kenya, Somalia, honestly, I would prefer good relations, but realistically, the relations aren't like always at their best. Sometimes they're good. As I've said before, the Kenyan president has, has visited Somalia. The Somali president has, has visited Kenya. Hell, like the... Previous Minister for Foreign Affairs was ethnic for Kenya was ethnically Somali. Lots of Kenyan ambassadors are ethnically Somali. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Kenya is the bomb. Kenya is where everything's at. Actually, this is so true. So when I was in Tanzania, Lion King, they were literally calling the lion the Simba lion. This is so true. Now the Kalenjin. All those long distance